This video is a demonstration of how to complete assignment 2 using Dreamweaver. This is the end result of what your assignment 2 will look like, just like the picture indicates. However, when you start off assignment 2, you have the assignment 2 file.html and also the CSS file. We can also see it here within our files panel. The information that we need is contained in the setup file. The setup file has the instructions for the CSS that we need to add. Alright, so let's go ahead and unlink this CSS file because when you download assignment 2, it looks like this. Okay, no CSS. If you look at the code, and you should, it has um, using div tags, has ID page header, ID container, navigation, content, and then you have a footer, as well as some various tags within uh, this particular web page. Right? And that's where you get the page header ID, H1 element, container ID, navigation ID. That the CSS is going to hook in to those IDs that we have set within the HTML. Okay. Also, the, the CSS file is going to be pretty empty. So let's go ahead and delete all that. Uh, but our end result, the CSS is going to look like this. All right. So the first step is to link the CSS file to the HTML page. So within our CSS styles panel, we see the attach styles sheet button click that button, we click browse, we want to connect it to the assignment to styles.css file, we can double click it here, we can single click and then click OK. And here we're going to simply click OK again, we're going to add it as a link so we leave that exactly as it is. Okay, nothing changed but if we look at the source code we see that now the CSS file is linked. Okay. Now we can go ahead and follow these instructions. First off, for the body element, element and tag are essentially the same thing. Sometimes the word tag is used, sometimes element is used. Actually, the word element is a combination of the opening tag, whatever is in between it, and the closing tag. So that makes up the body element. So in Dreamweaver, we click the new CSS rule button, and it brings up this new CSS rule dialog box. We simply click tag because that's the kind of selector we're going to use. Uh, the body is a tag, so we use the tag selector. Um, the selector name is going to be body. We simply click OK. We have the CSS rule definition dialog box come up. And following the instructions, we can simply go down the list. So again, the instructions look like this. I'm going to have it off screen, uh, but we're going to first set the font to Georgia Serif. So for font family, we simply choose Georgia. And the benefit of the CSS rule definition box in Dreamweaver is that we can click apply and actually see the changes as they take place. So if you don't know CSS, this is a great way to learn CSS by playing around with various properties, adding values, and clicking the apply button to see what happens. All right, so next we're going to change the text color to black, the line height to 140%. The text color by default is already black but we can go ahead and set it anyway and line height to set that to 140 percent we type in the value 140 and we change the unit of measurement being used to percent alright next we're going to set the margin to 30, to 30 pixels that's found under, under box and margin we're going to set it to 30 it's going to set it to 30 pixels for all four sides we can click apply and we see the margin being set at the, on the top and on the left um, as well as on the right. Next we set the background image to page bg.gif. We're going to set it to no repeat and we're going to set the position to fixed. After that we're going to set the background color to this value and I'm just going to copy it. Alright so we go to background. We're going to set the background color first. We click apply you see the background color change for the background image. We're going to go to assignment 2 images. We're going to use page dash bg. We're going to set the background repeat to no repeat and rather uh, background attachment. We're going to set that to fixed. If we click apply we'll see the background image show up. 
and we're going to click OK because that's all we're going to do for the body tag. If we messed up or if we missed something, we can simply click All and we'll see the body tag shown here. We can double click body and at this point go in and change any of the values that we've set. Alright, next we have page header ID H1 element. Okay, so this is going to be a compound selector within Dreamweaver. Again, we add a new CSS rule for selector. It's already set to compound, but if it wasn't, we would simply click and choose compound. Page header is an ID, so we type a pound sign and the word page header. It's case sensitive, so we have to put up a case H. And then we add the H1 for the tag. So we simply type it in like so. So what we have written out page header ID pound sign represents an ID we don't put the word ID and H1 is a tag or an element so we simply write out H1 okay we don't have to put the word element I I simply put ID and element here to let you know what it is so you know how to style it so you know if it's an ID you put a pound sign if it's a tag you won't put anything so this is how the selector should be let me click OK Alright, font size is going to be 350%. We type in 350, set the unit of measurement 2%. Alright, we can click apply. We'll see that get larger. Okay. Next, we set the text color to this value. We can simply copy and paste that in. All right, we see the color change. Next, we're going to set the padding to 40 pixels. No side, no particular side was mentioned, so we're going to set that padding to 40 on all four sides. All right, next, uh, the left padding we're going to set to 120. So here we can uncheck this box, change the value for left to 120. You see that more space is given there. All right, and the last thing we're going to set the background image to header image position it to the top left and set it to no repeat. So we go to background, choose a background image, which is header image. We want it to not repeat, but before we choose the no repeat, we're going to click apply and you see it repeats. So it's going to repeat by default. So to keep it from repeating, we'll put no repeat. So it only shows up once. And then after that, we want to position it to the top and left. So for the X axis, it'll be left. Y will set it to top. All right, click apply. It's all. It's just like it is. Top left is the uh, default. And now we can click OK. Once again, if we made any mistakes or missed anything, we can simply double click page header, and go back in and modify. Next, we have the container ID. We're going to set the bottom margin to 30 pixels. Add a new CSS rule. It's going to be the container ID, so we set the selector to ID, selector type to ID, pound container. We can type that in. Bottom margin 30 pixels. So we just go to box, uncheck same for all, set bottom to 30, and we can click OK because we can't see the results. But if we look at it, scroll to the bottom. Um, it'll give us more space once we finish. Next we have navigation. Navigation ID set it the float to left and the width of 150 pixels. So if you want to set a uh, or add a new CSS rule, again the ID selector should be ID or the selector should be ID. Pound navigation because that's the name of the ID. Alright, we float it to the left, set the width to 150 pixels. So box category, float left. The width is going to be 150 pixels is already set here. When we click apply, we see the changes being made. Next we have navigation ID UL element. So that's going to be a compound selector. One thing we can try to do let me take it off live view is to click within the navigation and then add a new CSS rule 
And what that'll do is already populate our selector. Okay, selector type is compound. We want that. Again, the selector should be navigation ID UL element. Alright, it filled that in for us already. It just added more because Dreamweaver makes it very specific. So we can leave container on or we can take it off. It'll work the same. But for this selector, we're only going to target the unordered list. So our selector should look like this navigation UL. We'll click OK. So we need to set the padding and margin to zero pixels. So we can go to the box category and we'll set the padding to zero and the margin to zero. We can see the results there. Next we'll set the list style type to none and the color of the text to this value. So we can go to list, list style type, we're going to set it to none and we'll click apply. Um, we can go to type and place the color in and click apply as well. But here we just go ahead and click OK. Next, we have, it's kind of hard to see on the screen, uh, but you can let's see. I'll go ahead and switch this. Okay, next we have navigation ID list item element. We add a new selector. It's going to be compound navigation li. Camp compound for the selector type. Selector name is going to be navigation space li navigation id list item tag so the first thing we need to set is the margin to 10 pixels we go to box we set the margin to 10 we can click apply so we can see the results you don't always have to click apply um, next we're going to set the border width to one pixel the border style to solid and the border color to this value so we can set all those properties of a border within Dreamweaver. One pixel, solid, and then the remaining color. To do that, we go to the border category. The style is going to be solid. The width is going to be one pixel, so we can type that in. And we can paste in the value for the color. And that's all we're going to do besides set the background color. So we can go to background and simply paste in the color. Cool. Next we have the navigation ID A element. We make the selector for that. It's going to be compound. If it's not set already, you will set it. And we can delete everything else except A. Okay, this is what our selector looks like. First we're going to set the color to white. So the color of the text is going to be white. All else equals white. Um, next we set the background color to this value the padding should be 3 pixels and then on the right 60 pixels so we go to box set the padding to 3 pixels uncheck same for all and we'll set the right to 60 pixels Next, we'll set the text decoration to none. If we go to type, text decoration none. And that's all we have to do. And we click OK. All right. So at this point, move along OK. That's what it's going to look like. Next, we have the navigation ID, a hover pseudo class. OK. Navigation is an ID, a hover is a pseudo class. We don't have to type those words, it's simply what it is. All we're going to do for this one is set the background color. So we can go ahead and copy that. Add a new select, a new rule. Alright, it's going to be compound, pound navigation, space, A colon hover. So our selector sh should look like this. We'll click the OK button. And all we have to do is set the background color. Okay, the A hover, you won't see that until you actually. Uh, view your page in, in the browser or use live view. Alright, so we have our navigation set. Next we have the content ID and we're going to set the background image to trans BG. So we add a new CSS rule. 
this time it's going to be for our content ID the selector should be ID and Dreamweaver CS6 you can it's optional with this pound sign if I'm not mistaken but I always type in the pound sign anyway alright so we're going to set the background image to the trans BG you can click apply and you can see see the effect of it shown there and that's all we're going to do for content no we need to set the border as well so we're going to set the border to one pixel solid and that color value it's a shade of gray uh, so we didn't add everything for content so all we have to do is double click on content it comes up here the border it's going to be solid it's going to be one pixel and we can paste in our color okay once again I exited too early so left margin is going to be 180 pixels and the padding is going to be set to zero so let's go back to Dreamweaver bring this up left margin 180 pixels uncheck same for all 180 padding is going to be zero okay now we've set all we're going to set for content and we see it's starting to take shape have a very decent looking layout next we're going to add the footer we're going to set the clear to both text align center The selector type is going to be ID. Type in footer. Alright, we can go to box and once again the clear is going to be set to both. So we can do that first. Clear both. And then text align is going to be center. So we can go to block. Text align center. Okay. And that's all we have for the footer. Okay, we're just going to line that text to the center as we see there. Next we have footer ID, list item element. So we can actually click inside the footer and then choose to add a new CSS rule. And it's going to have some of that filled in. If not, we would ch simply choose compound as the selector type and type in pound footer space list item. Alright, so we're going to set the, the display to inline. So we go to block, choose the display, and then choose inline. Next, we set the padding on all sides to two, 10 pixels. So we go to box, type in 10 for padding, and we can click OK to see the results. Excuse me, apply to see the results. Alright, that's all we're going to do. So we can choose exit. Excuse me, you can choose OK to exit out. Next, the H1 element, we're going to set the color to this value. Alright, so we can go ahead and scroll back up to the top. Add a new CSS rule. This time, we're working with just a simple tag again. So, we're working with the H1 tag. Whatever CSS we apply here is going to be applied to every H1 on the page. Okay, so we see a change. This is the only other H1 besides this H1. Uh, but we've already specifically defined that H1, so we're okay. It's only going to modify the H1s, the other H1s, with the exception of that one. Okay, next we're going to add a CSS selector for the heading 2. This is the heading 2. We see it's already filled, but we only want to show tag and H2. Alright, we set the border left to these values, 20 pixels, and then solid. So we go to border, solid. Um, the width is going to be 20 pixels. And we can paste in the color. Alright, now here we, says, here we see it says border left. So only the border left should have these these values so we can uncheck these choose none actually what I'm gonna do well, we can we can do it like this we can choose none because only border left should be set we can delete these values the easiest way or the best way to do this is simply choose or uncheck same for all before you do this alright 
Okay, but if you do it, you can fix it pretty easily. You see the border being shown there, border left. Next, we have border bottom set to 5 pixels, solid, and the same color value. Solid 5. And I'm going to simply paste in that color value. Okay, so there our H2 looks like that. And we set the padding left to 5 pixels. So we go to box, uncheck, same for all this time. And we set that padding left to 5 pixels. Give it a little bit of space. Next, we have the H3 element. We want to set the background image to header star, and the image should not repeat. So we go to tag for the selector type, H3 for the selector name. We're going to set the background image, choose background, browse for the background image, it's going to be header star. If we click apply, well we can't see it in, in the screen right now, the H3 is down the page. We're going to set the background repeat to no repeat. Double check it to see if there's anything else. Uh, padding left should be set to 20 pixels. So we go to box, set the padding left to 20 pixels. And we click OK and we take a look at we have our star showing there. Next we have the block quote element. We're going to simply set the background color to this value. Block quote is a tag, so we add a new CSS rule. Choose tag. And we can choose block quote from the list or we can type it in. Alright, here we go to set the background color. Click OK. Next we have the unordered list element. We're going to set the list style type to square. So we go back to Dreamweaver. Add a new CSS style. Tag should be unordered list or UL. We're going to set that list style type to square. Okay. And if we look at our unordered list, we'll see it's now squares instead of disk. Next we have the A element the anchor tag. We're going to set the color to this value and the font weight bold. Go back to Dreamweaver, add a new CSS style. Tag is a selector. The anchor. We set the color and the font weight to bold. And now anchors are that color and the font weight is set to bold. Next we have the A hover pseudo class as the selector and whenever you have the a pseudo class um, it's a pseudo A hover pseudo class because it's not actual tag uh, it's a state of the tag so it's known as a pseudo class whenever you're using a pseudo class as a selector in Dreamweaver you choose selector type of compound so we add a new CSS rule compound it's going to be our selector type and we simply type in A colon hover Alright, now background color is the only value we want to set, so we choose background, paste in the value, uh, click OK, and this is what our site should look like. Alright, we can put it on live view, we mouse over links, the background is going to be gold, we mouse over your navigation, it's going to be maroon. And that is the complete version. of assignment 2. Let's see, now the footer isn't showing. Let's take it off of live view. So for whatever reason the footer isn't showing up in live view, but uh, this is how it would look anyway. Okay. Assignment 2. Complete.